Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kybit Labs. In today's video we're going to be just looking at the question of what makes a molecule polar. Excuse my handwriting in that in uh, the, the title I realize it kind of looks like I'm I can't spell but I just can't write very clearly that's all. Um, so to recap we introduced the idea of the intermolecular attraction called dipole-dipole forces. Um, so it's a, a different type of intermolecular attraction that exists between molecules that are permanent dipoles rather than temporary ones so they always have a positive and a negative end so a really slight positive and negative, okay, hence the little delta symbol that this, you know, like an 8 that I can't, haven't quite completed, um, but yeah, because it's only a really subtle difference, but it does exist, and that therefore then that leads us to a discussion of what we call polar bonds and polar molecules, so a polar covalent bond being one that exists with a positive and negative end, and then a polar molecule that has this idea of um, a positive end and a negative end, okay, and so this is kind of what we're going to be addressing in in looking at this question. So there's two main criteria that we need um, to, do for a, to, to make a molecule polar. First of all, there needs to be polar covalent, at least one polar covalent bond, if not more polar bonds um, that exist within that molecule. It cannot be polar if they do not have that. Okay. And then the second thing that we need is overall asymmetry. So when we look at the molecule as a whole, that there is an imbalance in the electron cloud. Okay, so let's have a look at um, let's see, let's have a look at water, and then we're going to look at carbon dioxide, which looks like this. All right. So what we see. So water is a molecule which is polar. Okay, we're going to look at that, um, the the effect of that in in the you know um, in in a future video at this idea of what we call hydrogen bonding. And so that for a so water is a molecule that we say is polar. Okay, the first thing is that the oxygen hydrogen bond is a polar covalent bond that exists with a partial negative charge on the oxygen and a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. Okay, that is an oxygen atom has a, tends to have a greater pull for electrons than hydrogen does. Um, and this occurs on this bond over here and also this bond over here. Okay, so that proportionally that this negative charge is twice the size of the positive charges that are over here because it's pulling electrons from two directions at the same time. Um, now, the, the reason, so when we're looking at our two criteria that are here, Okay, that first of all, it ticks the first box because we have not one but two polar covalent bonds that exist in this molecule. Now, the second thing is that if you look at this shape, so when we've looked at valence shell electron pair repulsion theory before, we recognize that water is what we call a bent shape. Okay, so that um, we have this, we have two kind of lone pairs of electrons that are taking up space um, off the oxygen here, and so therefore out these bonds extend down. Um, down this way. What that means, um, especially perhaps what I might do is I might just exaggerate this shape a little bit just to make it a bit clearer to see the next bit. Okay. So what that means is that then if we look at this molecule as a whole, and I'm to take my take this, is that I see that I uh, if I if I kind of look above this here that I have a negative side over this side and a positive side over this side and if I draw a dotted line kind of in the molecule like this this is where we get this side being positive and this side being negative so what that means is that this molecule has what we call overall asymmetry it is an asymmetrical molecule that as the, the molecule as a whole that the electrons will tend to be found more towards the oxygen and not and less towards the hydrogens. So we have polar covalent bonds and we have overall asymmetry. That is, we have the molecule as a whole has a positive and a negative end. So that means that water is polar. But now let's have a look at carbon dioxide over here. Okay, so the carbon oxygen double bond is also a polar covalent bond. So that the oxygen tends to have a greater pull for electrons than the carbon does. So the carbon ends up positive, the oxygen ends up negative, and um, because it's being pulled in two directions, that the carbon is 
um, has a uh, double the positive charge in the center than the oxygens do negative at the opposite ends. So we tick the polar covalent bond. However, if you look at this molecule, we see that this is what we call a linear structure. Okay, it's 180 degrees if we kind of look at that angle over here. So it's just, it all it lies in a straight line. Okay, part of that is just because, you know, that we have double bonds that the carbon needs to make to opposite things, and so the safest way is to point those away from each other at 180 degrees. What that means, though, is that, yes, we have uh, positive and negative ends of these polar bonds, but we don't have the same ability to draw that dotted line of asymmetry where we've got a positive end and a negative end, that the positive bit is in the middle and the negative ends are on opposite ends but equal. So if you imagine kind of the pull of electrons all kind of being, it's, it's like, a, like a tug of war where each side is kind of pulling with equal strength, that yes, they're being, they're being pulled to the sides, but they're being pulled to the same degree. And so you don't end up with the pull being one end and not the other. Um, um, and so what that means is that yes, it ticks the first box, but doesn't tick the second box, that these, char these um, polar bonds kind of cancel each other out. So carbon dioxide is a non-polar molecule, okay, because those electrons are being, um, that we don't have that asymmetry. Okay, so you need to have polar covalent bonds, at least one, um, more, you know, certainly it makes the molecule more polar, and it must have overall asymmetry. That is, the molecule as a whole must have a positive and negative end. If it only ticks one of those boxes, then it cannot be polar. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.